hello and welcome to Swords of Sovereignty. This is a, another game. It's uh, older, a little bit older game, well, a couple of years ago. It's uh, the twelfth volume in the By the Edge of the Sword series, which is a French published game war game series of medieval. I think it's mostly all medieval battles. It's very similar mechanically to the to GMT's musket and pike system, but a bit simpler. Um, there are two battles that came in this folio edition. Uh, the two are Bovines of 1214 and Warringen in 1288. And this I have set up for you already is the Bovine scenario. And it's a two player game, but I'm going to play through both sides. Just sort of, you know, taking, taking control of both sides as they go. Um, you, where you can see how the game plays, what it looks like, and how the mechanics work. Um, so first, they've got the forces arrayed here. Here we have the French army, commanded by Philippe II, the King of France. Um, and then over here we have a coalition army, which is led by Otto, who is the Holy Roman Emperor at the time. So let's just go over who's, who's in the battle, who's fighting here. Uh, and here's, of course, Bouvines and a bridge that's uh, of, of vital importance. So with the French starting off with them, we've got Robert II here and moving over we have Pierre of Courtenay and then these are Philippe's soldiers with the Oriflamme banner which has some special rules concerning it to his right we have Eudes III and finally Brother Guerin the Bishop of Sinless and these are all pretty high quality knights and uh, mounted, mounted troops and facing him directly we also have Otto IV in the center So, but starting up here we've got William of Longsword, the Count of Salisbury. Moving to his over, we've got uh, Renaud, the Count of Boulogne. Hughes of Boves, Otto's massive contingent here of mostly pikemen. And then on his left flank, anchoring the left flank, is Ferrand of Portugal. So those are the two, the two forces that are arrayed against one another. So what I'm going to do now is just sh jump right into the first turn. So let's take a look at things. So the the um, the first thing we're going to do is our command check. That's the first phase of any of any turn. Now in this scenario, obviously everybody starts next to their commander, except for this unit here. He's far away, so he's actually going to start the game out of command, which is going to restrict what he's going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an out of command marker and put him on there. So I'm going to grab this. It's just going to go right here. Okay, so he's marked as out of command. And with that being done, we can go straight into the initiative segment because there's not going to be any artillery fire. So for initiative, all of these generals have a command rating on them. Uh, is they have a couple of stats. They have their command rating, their command range, their movement, and they have a bonus, which helps with rally attempts and also combat. And it's also used as a tiebreaker in initiative. Basically, the lower, the lower numbers are good when it comes to initiative, but you want a bigger number for your combat bonus, obviously. So we're going to roll 2d6 for each side, and we're going to add the army commander's bonus. And that's going to give us a number to, to determine who goes first out of all this total. So I've got some dice here. And the, ooh, the green dice will be for the French, I guess, because the green die fell on them. And the black dice will be for the... Germans. So let's get a roll here. Okay, so we have a six for the French and a three for the Germans. Now six, his bonus is a three. So he, we have a nine is the number for the French. And a three, his bonus is a two, is a five. So nine, five. We have to look at the difference between those two numbers. That determines sort of the, the um, how big the initiative is is essentially so with that differential of four what that means is that the french will get to pick with any commander they want any banner to move first after that they're going to pick a banner on the german side on the coalition side that has to go after that so they get to force the coalition's hand a little bit and it's not so much necessarily to forcing them to do something bad, although that can have something to do with it. 
forcing an activation out of an order that the other player might want, but it also gives you advanced knowledge. So their initiative is so good, they're moving quickly, and they kind of have a sense of what the other other side's going to do. <clears throat> so right now, with them, they're too far apart to really engage one another, so what we're going to do is we're just going to activate somebody um, to move up, to, to start moving. Now, who do they want to move? I think they're just going to move the center because Philippe would go last, so why not? Let's just have them move first. I'm not really necessarily playing for good strategy. I'm just playing through it. So Philippe will move first. Now, really quickly, some of the special rules in this particular scenario. Normally the stacking is one unit per hex, but a special rule here is that militia can stack. Only militia of the same banner can stack and act as one unit, move together, fight together, defend together, and they can retreat separately. Another special rule is <clears throat> this banner has a rallying effect for other other units of the same banner, so just these units. If you are adjacent to it during the rally phase, then you can automatically reform from being discouraged to valiant. So you can get reformed. As long as they're in good order, then you can reform next to it. So the special rule. Another special rule is archers are weaker in this scenario. They're not a lot of archers. The Germans have archers. The uh, coalition army has archers. And another special rule is that leaders can become unhorsed, which is something that might might not even happen. It's kind of a rare chance. So, so that being said, let's move on to actually moving these guys. So uh, the numbers on the counters from left to right are their strength, their quality, and their movement. So these guys are all basically just standard four quality militia. And they're just going to... Philippe is just going to push the line up. All right, so one, two, cost one to go up a hill. One, two, three. And he's not going to go down there because if he gets attacked downhill, he's at a disadvantage. He wants to try to maintain that high ground a little bit. One, two, three. Again, he doesn't want to vulnerable, be vulnerable. One, so he's only going to move one. We're going to move slowly and try to maintain some order here. See, I could move him to here, but then he's by himself because he doesn't have the movement to get up to there, I believe. Now, this is a track. Um, that could disregard all terrain except for changing level, so it's still not going to help. So we're still going to just do this. He could go up to there, but that still seems like a bad idea. So it's going to be a very short move, I guess. And the cavalry, the knights, will move up right behind. Uh, this banner, try to get as, to, as, as next to as many as possible. So he's still going to hang on. He's going to hang back. He's going to basically hope that the militia can act as a speed bump. And so the first thing you do is you do your moves and then whatever melee is going to happen. And then after all the fighting has happened, then anybody out of command can move. Now, if you're out of command, you can only move half and you can half your movement and you have to move closer to your leader. So these guys, um, now the, the one thing about it is that the coalition wants to capture this bridge. So they, it might be a good idea to just leave this guy here just in case these guys can sneak around. So I think that's what I'm going to do with them. And then if they are really needed on the lines, then, then we'll move them up. So we'll leave it at that. So he's, he's done. He has done his activation. So now we're going to force a, a uh, coalition activation. The thing is, right this early in the battle, it's not necessarily going to make a big difference what gets picked, I don't think, actually. So, I'm going to pick, I'm just going to pick their center, let's, the thing, the thing is we could get some fighting, so, 
yeah get the pikemen so actually that might well they don't necessarily have to decide to attack but i'm just playing i just want to see what happens really to see, see how the battle unfolds and everything so i'm going to I, I think i will just pick auto and just see what what happens so one two three four so they actually could close the line and attack this militia um which would not necessarily be a good idea especially considering from an odds perspective so i think they actually might just try to hold this high ground right here actually so they'll activate one two three that leaves his rear open so he needs some support one two three four one two three one two three one two okay one two three one two three one two three four really trying to spread these pikemen out because they're so good against um Cavalry, and I've got cavalry over here. One, two, three, four. So he can get to there. So I've got a line of pikemen, and there's some more pikemen in the back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And he's going to have to be stuck there. And let's move the mounted guys. Now, the mounted guys. You don't want to charge through your own guys because that would rout them. So you'd have to make sure you move to get to make a hole. Uh, let's see. His command range is five. That's the other thing to think about. By I'm spreading his line out, which might give me some command problems for auto. One, two, three, four, five. So I want auto to end up like here. One, two, three. Right. Um, okay, so let's move the one, two, three, four, five, and one. I'm not sure what to do with them because there's some good, good mounted troops here. So, but I don't know how things are going to develop. So these guys are probably just going to move. Yeah, let's just move up. So they're just closer and they can react uh, this way or that way pretty well. Yeah, so that'll be that. So those two guys have gone. Otto has gone. And Felipe is gone. So now we're going to go to the ones. So we're going to do everybody that's a one. And the the person who goes, since both sides have a one, we're going to go the, he's the tiebreaker because his army bonus is less. So there are two guys with a one on the coalition side. Ferrand, this cluster here, and you've got Hughes, which is just these guys. So they pick one of these two and then it'll just alternate. So there are two French ones and that's, the two wings, uh, Robert and Garen, are both ones. So the Germans will do Hughes. They they might want to be waiting for Garen to move first to react to that. Sometimes actually going behind might be better. So Hughes, he's got minute arms, but they are not mounted. Um, but they are high quality. Those are really good troops. Um, okay, so one, two. It's going to move all the way up. So daring him to attack them. So, yeah. They're not in front of the pikemen. I don't want them in front of the pikemen. And these guys are the same. He'll go there. So that's that. So, um... Hughes is gone, so do I want the French want Robert, or do the French want Garen? Now, if the French pick Robert, that means these guys have to go first. Um, 
Yeah, let's do that. So what does Robert want to do? Does Robert want to get, get in the mix? Of course, if Robert moves up, he might get attacked. Well, he will definitely get hit. So what is he going to do? So let's see. He could actually, well, he couldn't do a cavalry charge. That's the thing, because cavalry charge has to be straight ahead. It can't be, there are the three frontal hexes. So this facing is the top. So this unit here, here, and here are his frontal hexes, but a cavalry charge has to be through the, sh the front front, that one only. And they have to move a minimum of uh, four, I think. Uh, there's a minimum, minimum amount of movement. Is it four? Let me double check that. Was... Or is it a minimum of one? At least one. And it can't expend more than four movement points before it charges. So you have a minimum. You can't expend your entire movement. I guess because if you move your entire movement, you're slowing down a little bit. So let's just move these guys up. So we got arquebusiers, which are like speed bumps, basically. They can shoot. And hmm. Well, they could actually move up here one, two, because they'll get a chance to do ranged fire. <clears throat> For what it's worth, I mean, it's not like super effective or anything, but you know, something might happen. So we'll do that. We'll move up one, two. Actually, he might do. One, two, and then he'll go one, two, three. So he can try to get a shot here and a shot here. And then these guys are going to move one, two. One, two. One, two. Like that. So there's not going to be any uh, melee declaration, but there will be ranged fire. And so the reason why he moved here, there's two, there's multiple different opportunities to fire. There is a, an artillery and archer fire phase that happens before initiative or anything like that. Now in the activation phase, there's during movement and combat, there's two opportunities to fire. The first is right after movement, and that's ranged fire for non-adjacent units. The second one is after melees are declared and anyone involved in a melee, can, you can do offensive and defensive fire. So if they had moved here and declared a melee, they could do offensive fire at that point because they're adjacent. But they, but this is just going to be a shoot, basic, a basic like fire attack. So it's going to be, and it's obviously not obligatory. So. He's not adjacent. So, all right, so what what we're gonna do is he'll shoot at him, he'll shoot at him, to see if they can do something. So, he's only got two strength. It's an Arcabusi at a range of two, so I need to roll either a seven or a nine. A, a seven will um, discourage him, and a nine will just straight up route him. So there are going to be some modifiers. Let's see, he's uh, a small unit, so he's only going to hit a, he's going to minus one to his die roll. And he also moved, so it's another minus one, so it's minus two. So, which basically means a nine is required to do anything. So let's see here. So let's do this first shot. No, and the second shot might kill the leader. That's not gonna be anything. So nothing happened with these two shots, and that'll conclude Robert's activation. So now Ferrand needs to go because he's a one. So I've got some of Otto's banner in front of him right here. This is Ferrand. So he's got some archers. And some other guys. So basically, I want to extend this line a little bit. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. I think they'll do that and they'll move these archers here. And the, uh, the horse is gonna. One, two. 
going to just be right behind them. So if these guys bust through the line, then, then they're going to hit a wall of of uh, mounted guys and these archers looking to do some supporting fire for what it's worth. It's not going to be very effective, though. Okay, so now it's time for Brother Garen. He's the next one. These guys, these are high quality guys. Basically, I think the goal with these guys is going to be to try to just hit this group of Ferrand and turn around. That's basically what I'm going to try to do with them, I think. And then the coalition, I'm going to try to sneak around here to get behind them, I think. Um, and then the sinners is going to be going to slam them into each other. So, Garen, one, two, three, four, five. He could get here and um, attack him. Minute arms versus militia have a plus two. I mean, there's a there's a chance that they could they could do some damage right away against the militia. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that could set up some shots. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's no, there are a zone of control rules, but they're basic. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to move into a zone of control, but it costs, uh, it costs one to move out of a zone of control. So, okay, we're going to get in some, some combat coming up here. And one to cross the stream, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the problem is if he goes there, he can't fight. He'd have to fight the pikemen. He just doesn't want to fight the pikemen. Um, one, two, three, four. He could go five, six, actually. So there we go. Actually, that works. Because now we can hit both of those. And one, two, three, four, five. And these very good guys, very high quality. Garen is going to, he's a very good warrior. But he's going to hold back because the well the unhorsed rules can come into play here because you have uh, mounted fighting solely militia. So if he get, jumps in, he could make the battle a lot more decisive. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. I guess. Okay, so there's the uh, movement. Okay, so one problem with uh, actually doing that is I blocked him. Oh well, so he can't do his ranged fire. So we're gonna, but we'll still do a ranged fire here, and it's the same thing. It's still a minus two. So on a nine, it would discourage those guys. But he had nine for that. So seven. So no, nothing. It's only a minus one if he hasn't moved, but he moved. So now we're going to declare melees. Gonna grab two melee markers, and I'm gonna declare. When you declare a melee, you have to attack everyone in your frontal hex. So I set it up so that there's only like so. So we're gonna do hill attack here, and then I'll do a group attack here. Is the way I'll set those up. All right. So let's do the one here first. I think. Yeah, so we're gonna look at some modifiers. The modifiers range from minus seven to plus seven. If you have plus seven, you can't add anything else to it. So the different modifiers are gonna be troop quality differential, odds differential. Um, there's also a matrix of unit types. So like minute arms versus militia have a benefit. Minute arms versus militia are actually a plus two. So right off the bat is a plus two. Now other other modifiers we've got. The true quality is the same, so nothing there. The odds is one to one, which is a plus one, so it actually favors the attacker. You, when when you're doing your odds though, you round in favor of defender, but the modifiers favor the attacker. So one to one is a plus one, so we're at plus three. True qualities, I guess, as I said, is already the same, so we're at plus three. And it's not nothing. There's no positional modifiers in terms of rear hex, and there's no modifiers in terms of morale or formation. None of that is, is in play here. Everybody's fresh, everybody's valiant. I mean, it's not a charge. So it's just a plus three. 
So we're going to roll, and then I'll take a look at the table. So I'm going to add 3 to what I roll here. So I've got a 10. So a 10, 10 to a 13, the defender is discouraged and they must retreat. And the attacker, the only thing they get is an obligatory advance. They have to advance into that hex no matter what. So I'm going to grab a discouraged marker. It's going to go on him, and then he's going to have to form a, perform a retreat as well. Now here's another problem though for the Germans. He is discouraged and he has to perform a retreat. A retreat is a one hex fallback, okay? But you cannot pass through friendly units, and the stacking limit is still a hard thing. Um, he is militia. But uh, there's no militia here. This, so actually, the way these guys moved is a problem. There needs to be some gaps. Because in order to perform a retreat, a retreat is, is something in good order. The unit's still in good order. So they need space to be arrayed. So if you cannot perform that retreat, you lose one level of disorganization, of organization, right? So he goes from discouraged to routed. Okay. And when you become routed, you immediately make a two hex retreat. And in that one, you can pass through friendly units. However, if you do, they make morale checks, basically. So, And if you fail that, if you roll higher than that number, then that unit becomes routed. So if he routed through this archer, and I rolled a 5 through 9, he'd be routed 6 through 9. However, there's another problem here. They have to route 2 in a straight line towards the map edge. So the map edge is just straight up that way. So he would just go... A straight line would just be route one, two, okay? If it has no hex available after its two hex retreat due to the stacking limit, it is eliminated. So he's going to be eliminated, this guy. However, his routing is going to cause some severe issues because he's passing, he's still going to do the pass through stuff, it's still going to have a cascading effect. So this guy's going to have to make a check because he um, is being passed through. And then this guy will have to make a morale check as well. So they'll both have to make checks. So let me make those checks. This could be, this could just fold the line immediately. Okay, so for the archers there, there are four. Okay, so they pass. And then the uh, the knights with Ferran, I think, were a six. And they get his plus one. Um, so they're good, too. So it didn't happen, but this could have just uh, destroyed, done a lot of horrible damage to the German left flank. But it didn't. So this guy's actually going to be eliminated because he has nowhere to go. So they killed these militia. And there's an obligatory advance here. So they're here now. Now, it wasn't a charge. If there were a charge, he would be forced to or perform in a lawn, which is a, another charge right after that one. But that wasn't a charge. So we're going to do this melee here now. Uh, three and three is six. So six, four is, is still just one to one. So we're getting a plus one for that. And the combat matrix is going to be plus two. So we're plus three just like the other one except here the attackers have better morale or quality so we're plus four and then brother Garen is a three so it's a plus seven so this is a devastating attack plus seven so let's see what happens here Ooh, 15 now 15 is going to be defender is routed and defender has to retreat so He has to route. Now the problem, so with route and retreat is basically they're going to move three hexes back instead of two. Um, one, two, one, two, one, two. So, so the issue here is that if you get a routed plus retreat, you're eliminated after applying the route result if stacking is a problem. So even though he's going back a total of three, 
you do the route, then you do the retreat. So we're doing the route, but he has nowhere to go. So I, basically it's a matter of picking what direction he wants to go to. Um, he's going to go here again, but just because this guy's at higher troop quality and he's stacked with a leader. So he's going to route through the archer again because the archer is not as useful. So both of these guys are going to make morale checks again. Uh, a four for the archer. So the archer's going to route. And then Farand, the guy with Farand, ooh, a seven. Uh, this guy routes as well. So both of these guys become routed. Uh, but he's eliminated as well. All right. <clears throat> so his route move would bring him. Let's just route that way. His route move, or no, it would bring him that way, straight back. His route move will bring him that way. So it actually turned out that the line did get kind of messed up here. Oops. So these guys are routed. And we have an obligatory advance. I'm going to pick which guy advances. And you can change facing when you advance. So actually, let's see here. I'm going to advance because I'm afraid of Garen getting like unhorsed or something. So he could go this way and he's going to have to perform a charge against this guy. It's going to be obligatory. It's called a lawn. Or no, that's only when there was a charge. There wasn't a charge here. So it's just an obligatory advance. So actually, so in that case, we'll do that. We will do that. So that was that activation of combat and two militia died. Okay, so let's go back to the top and see who's next. Okay, next we're on the twos. We've done all the ones, so we've got the jur the uh, coalitions have William Longsword and Renaud, who are these up here, and then the uh, the, the French have Eudes the third. So since they both have one, the Coalition will go first, so do they want Renaud or William to go first? Now, these guys have already gone up here. The only people the French have left are this cluster and this cluster. So, um, probably should have moved these guys further out, actually, because these guys need somewhere to go. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and just, I guess I'll just move William Longsword's guys. So, like I said, I'm going to try to move them around here to just really outflank the whole... French force, although there is some issues here, so not really anything he can do about it way over there, not right now at least, but <clears throat> that didn't last long over there for them. Okay, so they're going to take up some movements. Um, the, the problem with him is that his guys aren't really mounted. Is this guy mounted? He's mounted. You know they're mounted when they are on the picture, they're on a horse. Uh, so he's still, he's got those knights. Everybody else is on foot. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. Ooh, that's dangerous. Dangerous. Two, three, four. They got to protect their back. One, two, three. If he goes here, he can easily get swooped down. Do something like that, and he's moved six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he's still good. His front's still facing, his rear's protected right now. So that'll be William. He's just kind of maneuvering, positioning, so then this guy's going to come over. So the other two is France. These guys, they're going to just fill in the line right here. One, two, three, four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. He can get all the way over there. One, two, three, four. They're splitting up, but that's okay, I think. Four. So it's thinner, and then the guy himself is going to 
One, two, three, four. Nope. Yeah, why not? So then the other two is, is this guy. Oh, he's not dead or anything. He needs to fill in here. One, two, three. He's going to go all the way up there to five. One, two, three, four. Kind of get in their face. Okay, so do they want to melee? You know, the problem is if he melees and gets an obligatory advance, he's really not doing well. This one wouldn't be bad because it's fighting these Arcabusias. It's just kind of poke a hole there. I think I might do that one. And here, they're pre-even. Three, five, six. Um, you know, he's pretty exposed actually because this guy can easily just come around and hit him in the flank as well on top of everything else I should probably leave him one back even though it gives him a height advantage and do they want to attack? Militia attacking Arkabusu is what kind of... Oh, it's actually a penalty. Ah, well... Hmm, that's interesting. I'll leave it like that just to see what happens with that. So that's the turn. The turn is now over for all... for... for uh, phase D, exactly, actually. So um, rally phase, we're not going to do really much here. We've got nobody discouraged. They're just two routed units. So these guys can make ra um, rally attempts to go from routed to discouraged. It's just a, a die roll. And if they fail, everybody who's failed just makes route movement towards the map edge. So let's go for the archers first. They're a four, but I'm going to add one because they're routed. So basically it's harder to reform when you're running away. If they were just discouraged, there would be no modifier to go from discouraged to valiant. So let's roll for them. A one. Okay, so they're discouraged. They reform one level. And here, there are five. And his bonus is going to cancel out the fact that they're routed. Because he's with them. Ooh, six. So they're still routed. So these guys are going to move. They're going to perform a route move. So actually, that's really bad that he is with them and they're still routing. Because his entire wing, his entire banner is going to be out of, out of, um, um, command. So they won't be able to initiate an melee. They can just move, and they have to move closer to him. So they, whole wing is going to have to start falling back. So actually, this Brother Garen's really aggressive attack here is going to roll all this up. These pikemen are going to have to fall back and, and everything, so... So he's going to move his entire movement allowance towards the map edge, which is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if he goes off the map, he's off the map. He's gone. He doesn't come back. Um, okay, so that is the rest of the turn. The turn is now over. So we advance the turn marker to turn two, and then we'll see you at turn two. Uh, at the start of the next video, I'll go over the points. All right.